man, I'd, I'd love to be a little hobbit, just sitting around, smoking a pipe, eating food all day. That's my kind of vibe. Dungeons & Dragons, also known simply as D&D, is seeing a huge boom in popularity at the moment. From it featuring in Stranger Things, to the world being much more accepting of things that were once seen as niche and nerdy, geek chic and all that. There was even a recent film which by all accounts was actually pretty fun based on Dungeons & Dragons. One of the biggest appeals of the tabletop game is that you can do whatever you want to do and be whoever you want to be without the limitations of video game coding or real life in general, I suppose. And while you can play as whoever you want, there are specific fancy races that the game is set up for you to play as if you don't fancy being too creative. Some of these are well-established fancy races and others were created specifically for the game. So for all you D&D nerds out there watching this, let's find out where exactly these race names came from. Also, we're just looking at the more popular playable races, slash the ones that I found more interesting in general as a non-D&D player. Yeah, I've, I haven't played much D&D in my time, so this is very much coming from an outsider's perspective. We really can't cover every race here, as like I said, you can literally play as anything you want to if you're creative enough. You want to play as a rock? Yeah, if your DM's cool with it, just, just do it. And also, I'm not covering humans who... Who cares about humans? Like, why would anyone in D&D play as a human? It's a fancy game. Surely you do enough being a human in real life, right? Let's kick things off with elves, which are not only popular in Dungeons & Dragons, but a staple of fancy in general. Sometimes they're depicted as being cute little things, but in many cases they have much more magical, noble beings. This is the case in D&D and other things like Lord of the Rings too. Elves have their origin in Germanic folklore, with the name coming from the older German Alp, which means things like evil spirit. I guess these guys were once seen as more mischievous before they got their more regal appearance they have today. Dwarves are also known of beyond the world of Dungeons and Dragons too, often depicted with big beards and a love of all things precious and gold. Dwarf was seemingly initially used to refer to anyone who was small before being linked with this fancy race. The word itself is of old Germanic roots too, maybe coming from an ancient word meaning something tiny, which fits with Dwarf's diminutive demeanour. Gosh, I got that last line, it would take Dwarf's diminutive demeanour, I thought that would take a couple guys, cool. Dwarves are pretty small, but a race smaller than them are halflings. These are whimsical creatures who are good at being sneaky and are in no way legally hobbits, they're, they're, definitely, they're definitely not hobbits guys, no, halflings are completely different to hobbits. Like. A, yeah, that's a that's a whole thing we actually covered in a video way back when. And this name of halfling is pretty easy to understand. These guys are around half the size of a race like humans and elves, and the ling suffix is just a common name forming element, especially in D&D, and we see in other race names too as we go on. Man, I'd, I'd love to be a little hobbit, just sitting around, smoking a pipe, eating food all day. That's my kind of vibe. Another race that's smaller in stature are gnomes, Gnomes are found across folklore and peoples from gardens. In Dungeons and Dragons, gnomes are seemingly pretty little tinkering and building things. Gnome as a word might come from the Greek Geonomos, which means earth dweller, which makes sense with them being known for living underground and whatnot. Though perhaps the smallest race in D&D are the fairies, though some sources tell me they're actually the same size as the halfling, but like I said, I haven't played all that much D&D, so I'm not an expert on these things. And also, you can do whatever you want to be. If you want to be the biggest ever fairy, go for it. If you want to be the tiniest ever human, go for it. You can, you can do whatever you want. But anyway, we all, we all know what a fairy is, right? They're like little human creatures that have wings that go up to all sorts of mischief. And in D&D, they are like this too. The word fairy has roots in the Latin fata, which means fate. This is because fairies were believed to use their magic to determine the fate of various human beings. Before we continue, I want to say a huge thank you to my most recent patrons and super thanks leavers. So huge thank you to new patron Nala the Huck, point of pronunciation there, and super thanks leaver Kaluna Nightwolf. Patron is the best way to financially support Name Explain, and donating just $1 a month gets you ad free videos, a chance to say what names I've explained, an exclusive monthly newsletter, and your name at the end of these videos. All of that can be found at patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below. Conversely, if you want to just make a one time donation, you can leave a super thanks directly in the comments section of any of my videos here on YouTube. They help out tremendously too. Thank you. 
Anyway, let's look into some of the races linked more with mischief than good. But once again, this is D&D. You can play as any of these races and be a good guy. Take Orcs for instance. While often battled as an NPC, you can play as them. And you can even play as half Orcs too. Orcs are seen as scary monster-like beings who do enjoy dark and caves and all things naughty. Orc is a term made popular by Tolkien. But he didn't invent the term, and this is why the Tolkien estate can't claim it like they did Hobbit. That, that's good, well done, whoever originally created the word Orc back, way back when, as we'll see. Orc is an old English word meaning things like demon and goblin, which Tolkien might have found in writings he studied like Beowulf and used it in his book. Tolkien's Orcs became the defining Orcs, and they were the main inspiration behind the ones found in Dungeons and Dragons. As mentioned, the word orc relates to the word goblin, and goblins are playable in D&D too. Goblins throughout folklore and media come in all shapes and sizes. In D&D, they're depicted as being small and mischievous. The name goblin is believed to come from one specific folklore creature, the Gobelinius, an evil spirit that haunted a region of France. There's also hobgoblins too, with hob being an old term for a clown or prankster. These guys I guess are somewhat more mischievous than normal goblins. There's also many races inspired by real world animals in D&D too. The most known of these have to be the centaurs and minotaurs, which appear in myths way beyond Dungeons and Dragons. Centaurs are the ones with the human tops and horse bottoms, and minotaurs are on the human bottoms and bull tops, just in case anyone was confused about that. The tall part of both these names relate to the Greek word for bulls. The start of centaur, however, is debated, but the mino at the start of minotaur comes from Minos, the king in Greek mythology who forced children to be eaten by his eponymous beast. One race in D&D features the name of two real animals, that being the bugbear. Bugbears come from folklore and have been depicted in a variety of ways. In D&D, they are more beast-like creatures that look more like bears than bugs. The name is of course a simple combination of the words of bug and bear, two creatures which are scary for different reasons. I'm personally more scared of bugs than bears. I don't know, I've never been face to face with a bear. I'm sure if I was face to face with a bear, I'd be scared of them, but I don't know. They're so cute bears. Oh, I love bears. Anyway, terrified of bugs, however, hence why that part scares me more. Uh, anyway, there's also a load of other animal inspired races in D&D, which are seemingly made specifically for the game, which have names which are kind of just like corruptions of the animal they are inspired by. Like the Owlin, which is a kind of owl type creature and the name just comes from owl. Or the Leonin, which is a lion like human. Leonin, lion, it's easy to see that. And of course the Tortle, which is like a turtle human type thing. And the word Tortle is just a combination of turtle and tortoise. No, obvious that one. Though, finally, let's talk about the most famous race which was created specifically for Dungeons and Dragons the Tieflings. Well, from what I can gather, they were made for DD anyway. In the game, they are depicted as human in shape, but with large horns, tails, and skin that comes in all kinds of colours. They are often seen as a lower race too, looked down upon by humans and elves and such. The name once again has the ling suffix like we see in Halfling, with the teeth part coming from German meaning deep slash low. This relates to the fact that they are seen as a lower race in D&D. Yeah. Even in a fantasy world like Dungeons and Dragons, racism is seemingly still a thing unfortunately. Dungeons and Dragons is seemingly full to the brim with interesting races, and this wasn't even all of them. Let me know your favourite race and ones that I might have missed out on down in the comments below. Also, please just a topic down below which we could cover in next Monday's Name Explain video. It could be about literally anything, and the topic can be as niche or broad as you like. I will then choose three of those topics and place them in a poll for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner from the poll will be the topic covered in next Monday's Name Explain video. You can vote in that poll as well as enjoy many other great benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash name explain which will be linked down below and by donating just one dollar a month. Thank you. Anyway, that's more than enough for myself, but don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where I'm name explain YT. And don't forget to join the Facebook page, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Okay all, take care. Recording. Do I still know how to do this? Let's find out. Why is that mirrored? Why did a, a company who specialise in video think and know that creators would have those in their things would make it mirrored?
really stupid. Oh well. Um, should we do this? Let's go. With elves, which is not wish a Roman block. For the game. I can't see the last line. I'm gonna have to do that again. And no, I don't want to be a dwarf, I want to be a halfling, I think. Dwarf or seemingly initially use. It's a mouthful. This is because fairies were believed to So close. That was a really weird gap I did in that one. I should have Oh well it's done now. Some things never change. New Year's same old sh. 